Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at an introduction to mass balances. So the general mass balance can be defined as the following equation. So we have the accumulation is equal to the input minus the output of the system plus or minus the generation plus or minus transfer. Now we will look at defining each of these terms in just a second and then we'll have a look at a working example at the end of this video. So the accumulation term is expressed as a rate of change in the mass, the concentration, the number of moles, the height, the volume, the temperature, the enthalpy, etc. all with respect to time. Now such examples would be the rate of change of mass with respect to time, the rate of change of volume with respect to time, the change of the liquid height, the rate of change of the liquid height with respect to time. So there is several different variations that we can have, all are with respect to time. Now the in and out flow is that are expressed in terms of the number of moles, the mass or the volume which comes into the system and leaves the system. Now for batch reactors this doesn't apply. This would only apply for CSTRs and plug flow reactors. Also if you have fixed bed catalytic reactors um, with an in and an out flow as well. Now one thing to note is that when we deal with these kind of equations if we have reactions taking place, so if we have a reacting system, then we have to do everything in terms of moles, because moles is a thing that we can relate each component to. We can't relate it in terms of mass, so we have to do it in terms of moles. Now the generation term will only occur in mass balances when a reaction is involved, i.e. reacting systems. Now the sign convention here is we have we've seen that there was a plus and a minus at the generation term in the general balance. Now the plus is when we deal with products and the negative is when we deal with reactants. Because if we consider the generation, if we have a negative, then that means that we are losing the component. So the reactant will of course get less as the reaction proceeds and then the product will increase in value as the reaction proceeds. Now normally what we do is we model around one of the reactants. Sometimes we model around the limiting reactant and that will tell us the minimum uh, value that we can achieve in terms of the mass of the products or any other variable of interest. Now the transfer term refers to mass transfer to and from the system by diffusion through fluid steam, by diffusion through a boundary layer, or by diffusion across an interface. Now mass transfer in this lesson won't be discussed, however we do have a dedicated course that considers mass transfer and we also cover mass transfer in our mass and energy balance course. So if you want to know more about the in-depth analysis on mass transfer, please do check that one out. I'll put a link in the description on the website where you can find more details about us there. So if we look at a working exercise, now this is for non-reacting systems. It says we have a distillation column that receives a feed of 1200 kilograms an hour. And it's a mixture of toluene and benzene that contains 55% weight per weight of benzene. So that is in the feed. Now the top product contains 95% benzene weight per weight. And the bottom product contains 5% benzene weight per weight. Now we need to calculate the flow rate of each of the streams and then the mole fraction of each of the components within the feed, the top product and the bottom product. And it gives us our molecular masses of benzene to be 78 and toluene to be 92. So the first thing that we'll do is we will express the information that we were given on a block diagram. So we have our feed coming in, so we have a flow rate of 1200, and we know the composition of the feed. Now B denotes benzene and T denotes toluene. 
So we know that at the top product, we have 95% benzene, 5% toluene. That would give us our 100%. And then at the bottom product, we have 5% benzene and 95% toluene. Now the overall balance must be what comes into the system is equal to what leaves the system. So the feed is equal to P plus W. So that means that the values of P and W must add up in terms of flow rate to the value of F. Now what we can then say is once we have this equation sorted, we then need to perform a component balance. Now we'll balance benzene over the entire system. Now we know that benzene is 55%. So we'll do 0.55 multiplied by the feed. Now we know the feed is 1200. And that's equal to there is 0.95 in the top product plus 0 0.05 in the bottom product. Now when we substitute in the value of F, we get 660 as the flow rate of benzene. Now we can solve using simultaneous equations. So we can rearrange this for P. Ultimately, you could do it for W as well, but here we're going to do it for P. So we know that P is equal to 1200 minus W. So we can substitute that in here and find the value of W. So in doing so, we find that W has a flow rate of 534 kilograms an hour. So therefore, we can work out what P is, because that's of course going to be 1200 minus 534. So that gives us a P value of 666 kilograms per hour. Now the moles is the triangle that you sometimes see in your chemistry classes is seen like this. So this is the mass, this is the moles, and this is the GFM. So this is the gram formula mass or molecular mass. So by rearranging this, we know that the moles is equal to the mass divided by the GFM. So if we do this in terms of uh, benzene, then this is for the top product in benzene. So we have 8.46 moles. Now, this is just a sample calculation in order to show how we work out the fraction or the mole fraction, sorry, of our system. So this is for the top product. So we know that if we balance the species uh, B, then our mass is 660, we have our GFM, and we have our number of moles. Then what we can do is do the same thing for toluene. So that would be 540 divided by 92. That will give us a number of moles of 5.8. Now if we add these values together, we get 14.26. So then we divide our respective moles by the total, and that will give us 59% benzene and 41% toluene. Now, for the top product, the total mass was 666 kilograms an hour. So what we can then do is say that we have 95 of benzene at the top, so we multiply that by 666. That will give us 632.7. And then we can do 0 0.05 multiplied by the flow rate will give us 33.3. .3. So then we can perform the same system again for the top product. So we know the mass flow rates. We know the GFMs. We can calculate the number of moles using that equation. And then we work out the total. So that would be 8.47. And then divide the respective moles. We get 0.96 and 0.04. So they are very, very close to the assumed values, which makes sense. If we got a value here of 80 odd, then there's probably an error that we've done somewhere. We've maybe used the wrong flow rate or we've maybe got the GFMs mixed up. So they should be around what the estimated values were in the question. Now for the bottom product, the total mass, we were told uh, flow rate was 534 kilograms per hour. So we do the same thing, we multiply 0 0.05 and 0 0.95 for benzene and toluene respectively. So then when we substitute in our table, mass, GFM, moles again, we see that we get the exact values of 0.95 and 0 0.05. So that just proves that our mole fraction is weight per weight what it said in the question. 
So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has enhanced your understanding of uh, mass balances. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below and we hope to see you in another video.